Welcome back. New day, new into the car, new pile and list of parts to get installed. So today, what we're doing is pulling off these stock GT front brakes. We are going to SN95 spindles. We have Cobra calipers. Dale painted them up real nice the other day. We have 13 inch front rotors, a new master, a Cobra booster, SN95 ball joints, Maximo Motorsports 3 to 2 brake line adapter. We got some caliper pins there and some new 13 inch rotors somewhere. So gonna get stuck into this. I'll try and get you guys as much uh, kind of informative content as I can, but it is hot today and there might be some time lapses where I just work away and try and get some stuff done. Yeah. yeah. side got things torn down rotor off uh, traditional tapered roller bearing style setup there dust cap cotter pin jam nut then outside bearing comes out inside one stays with the rotor pull the dust shield off of the spindle ball joint nut spindle comes off and then we are down to the very minimals here you guys have any questions on any of that stuff throw a comment up below i can uh, elaborate a bit if required for the ball joint and pop this boot off with a screwdriver and then get the press on there press that out sn95 ball joint goes back in same way nice and easy there don't need to do anything with the tie rods on this uh, i'm not sure if you're using 96 spindles they do sit out further you may need a different outer tie rod there is some people that were talking about certain years of Taurus uh, tie rod ends. Not too sure on that because just trying to retain the stock track width here. So I get this ball joint knocked out. New spindles are painted up, all nice and clean. And then we've got a uh, rotor to go on, caliper bracket, caliper, brake hose. May need to adapt the brake line as they are a different fitting. So we may either be getting adapters for that or just cutting those factory fittings off putting the correct threaded ones on for the newer style brake hose. So we'll get stuck into that, get this thing knocked out. ball joint installed. We got our dust boot here. Fits over, press it down. I'm ready to install the spindle. Got our cotter pin. Slip that in there. Grease fitting as well into the bottom of the ball joint. Do that once we get Spindle attached back up to the strut, just so we're not using the transmission jack and pressing against that grease fitting, and then breaking it back off. Rotors on, caliper brackets on. What is the caliper? I'm looking around. Look at the floor, kind of parts piles. And well, we seem to be missing one mildly important part. One of brake pads. Somehow, between the supplied parts, I'm trying to figure out what parts we had to order, those got overlooked. So, unfortunately, we're not gonna get this thing back down on the ground today. We're going to work on getting these brake lines plumbed up. There is a different fitting on the 
Cobra hoses compared to the Fox ones. So there is either adapters you can use or you can cut that flare off, get the correct fitting and reflare. We're looking into those options right now, figure out which one we're gonna go with. And then hopefully Monday we can get some pads. Not sure that how that happened exactly, but uh, it did. And now we just have to wait or push it off the hoist for now. We got everything buttoned up this far. Everything's looking good. It is nice when you're using factory parts. You're not trying to use some fabricated kit from overseas or something like that. And you go to put it on and spacing's not right. And the rotor doesn't sit in the middle of the caliper bracket or the caliper doesn't fit on right, left to right or side to side or something like that. It is a lot nicer this way. Yes, there are some really nice aftermarket kits. Don't get me wrong ones that are going to give you more stopping power than this but this is pretty economy priced for what you get you get the five log set up you get dual piston brakes you get a large rotor and then you get lots of wheel options as well so got this all buttoned up feeling pretty good minus a little hiccup there and uh that's about it for today we'll catch up with you when we get some brake pads do a little under the hood action today. Master and booster are out. Dale got them out earlier. Now it's trying to fit this larger booster in there with hopefully not pulling any of the strut tower brace out or any other major componentry. We got the newer style master cylinder here too. And then our maximum motorsports three to two brake line adapter that we'll have to put down there and also got that proportioning belt. Things are tight, old, original, seized, and Canadian-like, but we're, we're getting there. Brake booster install, successful. Easy? No, it fought us the entire way. We actually had to clearance the strut tower, which has been mentioned by lots of people before, but all down through here, actually had to radius that in, heated it up, pushed it back so that we could just get it to actually twist in there. I uh, got the proportioning valve starting the gut, the insides there. So put a wrench on it to hold it secure, unbolted the front cap, which I have over here in the vise, and got the spring and the piston or push rod out of the center there. You can buy these online, 20 bucks or so, and they don't have a cap or they don't have a hole in the end. This one has a little rubber seal, grommet, whatever you want to call it in the end. I'm gonna drill this, 1130 seconds, eighth inch pipe tap, eighth inch pipe plug. This is a dollar 30 at Home Depot. So much simpler, much quicker and easier. No shipping delays. Just go down to your Home Depot, grab that, good to go. Jam that plug back in, it has an O-ring on it, and then that'll be a gutted proportioning valve. All right, we got wiper motor back in, pulled that out to be able to get the booster at the top. Uh, it was very tedious with, between the wiring harness in there, uh, there is hose loom on everything in here as well, which just makes it that much bulkier. Um, not over the ideal. And then a strut tower brace in the way. So if you have one of those, leave it off if you're gonna do this brake conversion. If you're planning on doing a Cobra Master and Booster upgrade, leave that off until after. It'll make things a lot easier for you. Trust me, you'll thank me. We got uh, Booster vacuum line hooked back up uh, to the vacuum T in here. Trimmed about an inch off of that. Fit perfectly. Got our Master on the bench here, bench bled, and then the Maximum Motorsports 3 to 2 brake line adapter kit. Um, I did have to bend this a lot around into a full loop as it was not and this line um, well it is now pointed straight down but it was coming out on a 45 which is not the way the picture indicates from Maximum Motorsports which is weird and this loose fitting on the far right should be pointing straight down to go into the proportioning valve so once I get the master on there and measure the distance to the proportioning valve I'll have to bend that back around and make it so it'll actually thread in there. Um, also, with the proportioning valve, 
Got the cap back in there, down here with the eight pipe thread plug in there, a bit of Teflon tape or a thread sealant. Everything's good on that. And uh, we're on the home stretch here. Finally gonna get this thing done, be able to drive it. Dale the other day got the pads in. Um, funny thing, the owner messaged today and said, hey, do you want me to bring the brake pads by that I have? That's probably why Dale didn't order pads yet originally because he might have indicated that there was some with all the supplied parts. So that's just one of the challenges you run into when uh, you got some supplied parts, some not, and you're trying to do inventory on what you've got and I don't know, just something to factor into. Um, also, near the very beginning of the video, how we had some flip-flop in uh, decisions on which direction to go with, with this rear axle in the car, or the one that was out of the car. And one thing I would say to you guys, pick a direction, stick with it. It'll take you a lot less time rather than changing your mind as you go through. Yes, there's changes that are kind of come up and certain ideas that you're going to have as you're in there that may change your final outcome but at least go in with one common idea stick to that and things will go a whole lot smoother i'm going to get this master on dale's just stepped out for a little bit when he gets back we'll get this thing bled up and uh maybe even get to take this thing for a roll down the driveway test all these brakes out all right guys, we finally reached the end of the road on the five lug and Cobra brake swap. The master cylinders in, three to two line conversion all done up, tightened up, routed, um, got the brake fluid level sensor all connected back up. We bled the master once it was in the car again, bled all four corners. Everything's nice and clean, clean fluid, fresh. Look at those nice red calipers with the detailed lettering. Dale painted up those real nice. <clears throat> Everything went together well today. I'm happy. All those nice finely detailed parts just really set a car off and the red looks really good on the blue. Make sure when you guys are cleaning up under the bay here that you go and try and brake clean all this stuff down. If you get brake clean running down in your frame rail and your strut tower, it's gonna rot the paint off. That's gonna be your first moisture intrusion area. And then it's just gonna start rusting out. On this car, unfortunately, the towers need quite a bit of attention. Uh, but again, just do your due diligence uh, and, and clean things up because there's no point in making things any worse than they already are. So if you guys made it to this far in the video, thank you very much for watching. This has been a drawn out process with uh, definitely a couple hurdles, but Dale and I uh, kept going and I appreciate all the effort he's put into it as well. Getting things buttoned up, sourcing parts out, getting things ordered and uh, giving me a hand on this. A lot of this stuff is a little uh, more tedious if you're just one person. Swapping the diff, all of that, it's just easier to have an extra set of hands and uh, I definitely appreciate that. So thank you guys for watching and don't forget, if you guys wanna keep on doing stuff like this, five log convergence, you gotta go out and build. New wheel potential, test fit of the OZ.